I'm Matt Slater from Cornwall Wildlife Trust and I run the Sea Search project down here in Cornwall. I'm really lucky uh, to have grown up in Cornwall and I've been obsessed with marine life ever since I was a kid. You know, I grew up in Falmouth, just, just over the other side of the bay here and as a boy I was just always in the rock pools. We had a little fish tank at home so we used to collect specimens, bring them back and study them. I got really into it from an early age and I'm very lucky, you know, I'm still uh, still able to sort of do this sort of stuff for a living now. I learnt to snorkel when I was very young and then when I was 18 I, I, I learnt to dive. It just opened my eyes to another whole world. <laughs> Sea Search is a citizen science project where we train divers to record the wildlife that they encounter. It's a national project, it's carried out all around the UK and Ireland. Thousands of divers get involved and send in their records from the dives they take part in. It's a great project and it's a really good way for divers to learn more about wildlife. It starts to become quite an addiction for some people. There's so much out there that we don't know about the marine environment. And once you start that sort of learning journey, it's really, really rewarding. Anyone who wants to get involved in sea search can. I mean, um, if you want to do sea search as a diver, you need to have done some dive training and be qualified and safe to dive. You need to be qualified to uh, a paddy rescue diver or BZAC sport diver level and have at least 30 logged dives. Uh, that's because diving in UK waters is cold and challenging at times. But it's challenging so you need to sort of you need to have that, that basic level of skill to keep you safe before you can then do sea search. Having said that, if you want to get involved in sea search, you don't have to be a diver, you can also be a snorkeler or a free diver. You know, you need a good good warm suit, you need a mask, fins, gloves, hat, and it's a great way to begin exploring this habitat. You know, especially at low tide, you're right in amongst the kelp forests and the seagrass beds. You know, it's teeming with life. Safety-wise, you know, obviously we give you tips and make sure, you know, you don't put yourself in any risk, but actually when you're in a sheltered environment like this, the bay here today, you know, it's actually a great, a, a great sport that sort of almost anyone is very accessible, almost anyone can get involved in this as long as they're a good swimmer. My name is Mary, I'm a freediver and I've also been doing some sea searching. I'd been freediving for a while and then I saw the sea search course that they were offering for freedivers and snorkelers and um, yeah I thought it'd be a really interesting way to learn a bit more about what I was seeing and also collect some information on it that could be used to um, yeah, get protection and things for the marine environment. you go free diving really you can record what you're seeing and I think the nice thing about free diving is there's not as much kit as scuba so you can get to places and sites which are a little bit trickier for, for a scuba diver maybe. Come down to the beach hop in the sea and, and go you need like a wetsuit ideally if you're doing it in Cornwall and some fins and mask and snorkel but 
apart from that, it's yeah, it is probably a bit more accessible. Cornwall's been um, a bit of a revelation. I didn't realise probably like how much there was to see here and how amazing the diving was. And so the last couple of years or so, as I've been doing more of that, it's yeah, it's it's totally different, obviously, to somewhere tropical, but I think it's just as special in other ways. All the kelp forests and the fish and seals and yeah, there's just so much to see, so much life and so much to learn about. So yeah, it's it's brilliant. <laughs> I think it's just a different kind of experience um, just like some of the dives especially in the summer when you're in the water and it's not that cold and you can stay in for ages and just kind of exploring new places and sort of finding gullies. For me in Cornwall it's been more on the sort of the, the smaller things like the seaweeds and the um, anemones. It's a different experience but sort of in different kind of animals. But um, yeah, it's just been really special when you're in the water and the sun's shining through and you're swimming through the kelp forests and these little gullies and yeah, it's just, it's different but brilliant, really lovely. Who knows, as, as we're going forwards, we've got, sadly, you know, a real problem with climate change affecting the environment. We don't actually know what could happen next, what species might disappear because it's got too warm, and what species might arrive because the seas are becoming warmer. It's always changing, but without divers and snorkelers telling us what they're seeing, you know, we, we can't, uh, we, we wouldn't know, we wouldn't be able to prove or, uh, be alerted to things that could be really problematic. So yeah, it's really important and really helpful work they're doing.